Today's topic is prolactin and hyperprolactinemia. Physiologic actions of prolactin include breast development during pregnancy, milk production, and a decrease in GnRH for several months after pregnancy, which causes a subsequent decrease in FSH and LH, inhibiting ovulation and making it difficult for a lactating woman to become pregnant. Lactin is released from the anterior pituitary and has actions on breast tissue and other organs. Dopamine released from the hypothalamus decreases the release of prolactin from the anterior pituitary. High levels of TRH seen with primary hypothyroidism, like Hashimoto's disease, will increase prolactin levels. And as mentioned, high levels of prolactin will reduce GnRH. Causes of hyperprolactinemia include lactotroph adenomas, in the anterior pituitary, producing excess amounts of prolactin. With renal failure, there is a delayed clearance of prolactin. With polycystic ovarian syndrome, elevated estrogen causes hyperplasia of prolactin-secreting cells. In primary hypothyroidism, the elevated TRH can cause an increase in prolactin release. Drugs or processes that decrease dopamine can also lead to an increase in prolactin. Most symptoms of hyperprolactinemia are related to decreased sex hormones, like estrogen and testosterone. This is because elevated prolactin depresses GnRH and decreases LH and FSH. Other symptoms are due to the enlarging tumor. Because of the changes in hormone levels, women with a lactotroph adenoma may experience amenorrhea, which is absence of a menstrual period, galactorrhea, which is milky nipple discharge unrelated to breastfeeding, vaginal dryness, and hirsutism, which is male pattern facial hair growth. Decreased libido and infertility issues also occur due to low hormone levels. Men with electrotroph adenoma may experience vision issues or headaches as the enlarging tumor activates pain pathways and compresses visual pathways. Men may also have erectile dysfunction and loss of libido due to low testosterone levels. Infertility and galactorrhea are rare in men. When diagnosing hyperprolactinemia, it is important to measure hormone levels of thyroid, endocrine, axis. High levels of TRH can lead to hyperprolactinemia because TRH can stimulate the release of prolactin. Normally, the thyroid hormones T3 and T4 work through negative feedback to inhibit TRH and TSH. If a person has low T3 and T4, as in hypothyroidism, then TRH is not inhibited by the negative feedback, so TRH will be high. Because the high levels of TRH can lead to hyperprolactinemia, it is best to do a simple blood test to check for thyroid dysfunction as an explanation of excessive prolactin before doing expensive MRI testing looking for lactotroph adenomas in the brain. Treatment for a lactotroph adenoma is usually dopamine agonists like bromocryptine and cabergoline, which inhibit the release of prolactin to shrink the tumor. These medications can also restore sexual function. For more complicated cases, transphenoidal surgery for removal of the tumor is an option. Thanks for watching.